Hello to you. My name is Maria Kondzielska and this is Poland Daily Culture. We know right now it's Christmas time, but Christmas join, I would say, always every year with Hanukkah. What is Hanukkah and how those two holidays are connected? This will tell us Johnny Daniels, who is here with us. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Um, yeah, Hanukkah and Christmas fall roughly on the same time of the year, almost every year. Hanukkah, according to the Jewish calendar, so sometimes it's the beginning of December, sometimes the middle, and sometimes at the end, sometimes the beginning of January even, so around the same season. And whilst historically there may be not so many connections between the story of Hanukkah and the story of Christmas, because obviously they're very different things. Um, well, all both connected to Jewish culture, I would say. I'm not sure how connected Christmas is to Jewish culture. Well, we we have Jesus born, well, who is a Jew. Well, he was Jewish, I suppose, <laughs> so, so maybe that is the connection. Um, but anyway, Hanukkah is, is based, obviously, from the story of um, the time of the destruction of the temple. When the temple was destroyed by the Greeks, uh, and this kind of group of heroic Jewish fighters, a very small group called the Maccabees, stood up to fight against this um, Greek empire. These strong warriors, this small group of people were able to defeat this mighty army. But beyond that, it was these ideals, this, this Greek culture that was against a freedom of religion and against a, a, a right of, of understanding the path of religion and the whole focus on, on hedonism and, and modernity with a kind of push against what was in the past. Judaism really, and, and Hanukkah was a fight for religious freedom and for, for the idea of, of spreading religion and religious culture. And the reason why we have this candelabra, this Hanukkah. Yes, because we, of course we have a menorah. Normal menorah is without, oh. without this one. <laughs> so it's, it's seven. And this one is the eighth. No, so a mono normal menorah, um, yes, seven, as yeah. you can see here. So this was a candelabra that would have been symbolic of the candelabra from the time of the temple. So a huge candelabra just like this, a menorah, would have stood outside of the temple. And one of the miracles of Hanukkah is that the, at the end and after the destruction of the temple, the, uh, the high priests went back in and they wanted to straight away light a menorah. And to light the menorah, you need olive oil. And the oil had been pressed and sealed in a special seal. And almost every single one had been destroyed. But a small pot of oil remained, sealed. And this was poured very carefully into the menorah, thinking that it may stay alight for a few hours. The miracle was that it stayed alight for eight days and eight nights, oh, until uh, until we were able to get more oil and bring that back and light continuously. So this is the reason why so we light them. So that's why oil. the eight one. Correct. That's why we have eight lights. Each night we light an additional night, light starting from one all the way till we light eight at the end. And the symbolism of this obviously is the bringing of light into the world, right? This is a modern way of looking at this, is this idea that we bring light into a dark time. December's the shortest month in terms of the length of the day. It's a cold, dark time, especially here in Poland with the short, short days. Of course, and that's why the Jesus, when he comes to, to the world, and he always, also, we say it's the light of the world as well. So, of course, they, they kind of joined together because he was obviously religious and he was Jewish, like traditionally religious when it comes to. There's a lot of stories in even in, in, uh, in the New Testament about the oil or about lighting the candelabra as well. So they all kind of join together. We cannot forget about it. And I'm always very moved about the fact that the two most important Christian holidays and celebrations, and that is Christmas and Easter, 
always join with very two very important Jewish uh, celebrations. And right, Passover, so Passover at the time of Easter, yes. and Hanukkah roughly at the time of, of, of Christmas. And, and again, they, they fall together roughly at the they same time of the year. fall together roughly. And Passover yeah. is like, I would say, even uh, very strongly connected to, even like Easter is an element which brings it even even like forward. There are a lot of symbolism which is all together. They, in, during the Passover, they eat the, the like the, the meat and the bone of a lamb, yep, and of the course lamb. the Passover lamb, and of course Jesus is the lamb. Right. So and but with during right now even with Christmas when we lit the the Christmas tree, and um, previously it was also with candles of course and not with fake lights. Right now it would be a little dangerous. But this connection of bringing light together and the fact that they, they, they join together in the celebrations for me is always very moving and I think. I see the connection, I feel like. Well, well, obviously, I think that, you know, one of the things that's so beautiful is that there is much more that connects us than brings us apart. And, and if we look at it from that perspective, or from many other perspectives as well, at the end of the day, religion all boils down to the fact of being a good human being. And, and this is the crucial part. It's a belief in a God and the belief in being a good human being. And whether you're a good Jew or a good Christian or a good Muslim, at the end of the day, it's really all the same. It's about being good and being decent and spreading the light. And if I'm a Jew, I'm spreading the light partially through my Hanukkah candles. If you're a Christian, you're celebrating through lighting your, you know, your things that you light on Christmas and your Christmas trees. And Muslims, I'm sure, light things as well. And, and this is all part of, of joining together and of understanding and of appreciating each other's culture. Again, until I'd come to Poland, I knew very little about the Christmas culture. And here it's wildly different to, to this kind of consumer Christianity that I'd seen growing up in the UK and this idea of Christmas as a time for presents and gifts. Here in Poland people tend to be a lot more religious and view things differently. Even today I learned something new so thank you for that. And, and this is something that I think really brings us all together is you know the fact that we can appreciate each other's holidays, understand that we're different to each other but still respect that difference and, and respect each other's religion and culture. I will put a point here and Merry Christmas to you and Happy Kanoka. Bring some light to your home. And thank you very much for watching Poland Daily Culture.